Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about a Khan Academy assignment called Rotate Shapes where the center is not equal to the origin 0, 0. This is a good problem for any geometry class but especially uh, an honors geometry class. So let's go ahead and get started and dissect the information that's given to us. So triangle ZAP is rotated negative 180 degrees about the point negative 5, 1. Okay, draw the image of its rotation using the interactive graph. I have this on notability just because I find it a little bit easier to use. But let's kind of break down some of the information we have. So negative 180 degrees. Now, what we talked about in some of my previous videos is when we have a positive rotation, it looks like that. Okay, so you have a positive rotation. It moves in a counterclockwise direction. Negative rotations go this way. However, if we're talking about 180 degrees, say we started over here on, on 9 comma 0, and we rotated 180 degrees around the origin, we would get here. That's positive 180. What would happen if we did a negative 180? Negative 180 would take us to the same exact place. So if it says negative 180, just consider it 180. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, you get to the same location. Okay. What other information does it give us? It tells us that the point about which it's rotating is this. So a good practice would be to write this into uh, notate, uh, proper notation. So that would be little r, and then we're rotating it negative 180 degrees, which is the same thing as 180, about the point negative 5, comma, 1. And then we are rotating which shape? Triangle ZAP. It's kind of messy, but it gives you all the information you need. It gives you that this is the point of rotation, or excuse me, that's we're rotating, rotating the shape for a transformation. This is the pre-image, the image that we're about to transform. This is the amount where uh, the angle of rotation, and this is the point at which we are rotating around. As you saw in my previous video, hopefully, uh, you'll see that the first thing we do is we want to pick a point that we want to rotate. We're going to take turns rotating the vertices. And I'm just going to pick Z here. Uh, Z gets a bad rap for always being last, so we're going to let him go first this time. So what I like to do is I start from my, uh, my point of rotation, my center of rotation, and I like to draw what I call a support. So I draw this support up. Okay, I don't like to draw a diagonal support because for, for me, it's much harder to see on a coordinate plane what's 180 degrees. It's hard to kind of guesstimate that. What's easier for me is I know that if I have a horizontal line facing to the left and I ro rotate 180 degrees, I know it's going to be facing exactly to the right. Same thing for up and down and 90 degrees so if this is facing left and I rotate 90 degrees, it's going to be facing up after a 90 degree rotation, okay? So that's why the coordinate plane is useful for vertical and horizontal lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these supports that connect to Z. Now what I have here is I kind of have this L shape that's going to turn, and as it turns, it's going to be attached to point Z. So I'm going to fix point Z to the end of my support. And what I'm going to do is I am going to rotate this. So how much do I need to rotate this whole mechanism? Keep in mind that this is a two unit uh, vertical distance here, and this is a three unit horizontal distance. So we need to maintain that relationship, okay? I'm gonna erase it just for cleanliness sake. Gotta stay clean. All right, so what I'm gonna show you here is hopefully I can rotate this there's 90 degrees, as you can see. Okay, we went from vertical to horizontal to the right. That's 90. And then finally, we have 180 degrees, so it's facing the other way. Okay, I need to make sure I maintain my same proportions. It's still The orange should still be two units down. The green should still be three units uh, from that, and it still is. Okay, so this is going to be my new location for Z. So I'm going to erase this now that I'm done with it. Again, it was two units down, it was three units to the right. So I'm gonna drop down point Z and make sure you label it differently, prime. 
Okay, some people, they like to go ahead and redraw this whole shape after they have one point. And they can visualize that pretty well. Um, for this particular one, it looks like I might need a little bit of help. So I'm going to do one more point and then maybe I will drop down uh, the, the third point after that. So I'm going to do one more example. In this case, I'm going to do P just because it looks like it's going to be easier to draw supports to P than it is A. So I'm going to go ahead and it doesn't matter. You can go vertical first. You can go horizontal first. Um, I think going vertical first is a little bit easier, but you know, everyone's got their own preference. But as long as you get to P, the, the point that you're rotating, with vertical and horizontal lines, you're, you're fine. Okay, so now that I have point P attached with some supports that are vertical and horizontal, I'm going to fix it. And now I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. So I rotate it 90, there's 90, and now I'm going to rotate it 180. So it should end up right there. Okay, so now let me switch back to the, my pen. My new point is at negative 8, negative 1. And this makes sense because remember how Z and P up here are right in line? Z and P prime should be right in line with each other also. So Z prime and P prime need to be in line. Now let's, let's visualize where should A go. Now we could do the whole thing where we draw vertical supports and horizontal supports to get to A. So I could go like this. I could add this in here, and I could rotate it just like I did before. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to visualize and see what is the relationship between Z and A and A and P. So we see that P and A are diagonal from each other, and Z and A are vertical from each other. With that in mind, we know that Z is three units vertical from A, so we need to maintain that relationship. So we need to go three units from Z, one, two, three, drop down our A, and there we go. There is our rotated triangle about a point that is not zero. Now how do I know A didn't go one, two, three this way? Well, because clearly this didn't ro rotate 180 degrees, that only rotated a, a little bit. Okay, it's got to be on the other side. Another way to th think of this is these points got to a new quadrant, so that A needs to get to a new quadrant also if it rotates around that point. So, and making sure that visually the angles match up, that's important too. That's another clue. These angles all need to match up. So A's got two. Okay, and um, if you would have connected A, if you drew by accident A up here, see how it goes through, that line goes through there? Well, that, that couldn't have happened because that's not what the original pre-image did. So you know you would have made a mistake by doing that. So that's how you do it. Um, hope you found this helpful. Good luck out there.